I'd like to thank you for giving me the invitation to be here this evening. Actually, I'm uh, representing the acting prime minister who has been called for urgent uh, war commitment. Nevertheless, it's, uh, it's always an honor to be uh, in the presence of such highly eminent personalities. As I was sitting there and looking around the room, I saw a lot of people around my age and up. I couldn't see a lot of young people. And it made me realize that uh, we need to have young people to be part of such forum for, for us to get the message forward. So I hope the message would go out to the young people that Gurmit celebrations uh, are not only for us oldies, but they are the ones who are going to take this leg legacy forward. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to thank, uh, on behalf of the Fijian government, and I'd also like to thank the government of India for their contribution towards the University of the South Pacific Hindi program and I wish University of the South Pacific well in that. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate our eminent personalities who have been felici felicitated here this evening. Um, again, one thing that struck my mind was that we, we, we need to capture uh, these stories into novels and at the same time we need people to read it. So encouraging people to read and speak uh, our language may not be the proper Hindi that we have in India, but the Fiji Hindi. We, we need to encourage people to speak and we need to encourage people to read. And I was talking to Professor Chandra while sitting there. I've been a teacher and it's very difficult to, to encourage students to take up Hindi in, in schools. If you give them options, they'd rather go for other subjects and they, they leave Hindi as a last option. Or many at times, my experience says, Hindi is taken by students because it's a scoring subject. It boosts up their mark. But we need to encourage as teachers, as parents, as guardians, and as uh, responsible members of the community, we need to encourage speaking Hindi and also the, 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 uh, the teaching of Hindi in schools and encouraging our children to take that up. Because the fact is, if we really want to take the legacy of what our forefathers have left for us, we need to know the language. And many at times, we sort of are not confident to speak. I mean, I, I, I stand here as a classic example. I try speaking Hindi. Uh, my Hindi is not very good. But I've done Hindi up till class four, in, uh, sorry, form four in secondary school. So I'm able to read basic. I can read the newspaper. I could read the title of uh, Professor Subramani's book and uh, the title of Mahek. But we need more than that. And I think as, as adults, we, we need to encourage on that. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate the students who have done well in the competition that was organized. And I wish you well for your trip in India. And I hope that uh, proves to be a memorable experience for you and come back to Fiji with, with good memories. So ladies and gentlemen, um, we've gathered here this evening and I'm sure you know a lot about Girmit, what happened. But there's other side that we need to focus on. And, uh, and that is we need to celebrate our legacy. We need to celebrate the diversity that we currently have in Fiji and we should pay tribute to our forefathers, to the Girmitis who brought that. If I can just um, share a personal experience with, with you. Two years ago I was walking down the streets of New York and you know, I wanted Indian food. So as I walked from one restaurant to the next, to the next, to the next, I couldn't find the food I was looking for. I was looking for roti, dal and curry. So lucky for me I stepped into a restaurant because I saw some familiar faces. So as I walked on and I said, ah, ab khana mili. I said to myself, because I really wanted to Indian food. So the person at the end of the counter went like this to me, Indian? I said, yes. India? Which part? I said, no, I'm from Fiji. And I felt so proud, but they didn't know where Fiji was. So while they saved me, uh, they had this small fulia kind of roti, they, this small roti, they kept serving it to me. And I had to tell them where Fiji was. And, and so I started telling the story about Girmitius, how my ancestors would have come here. Unfortunately, I haven't made any effort to go back to the archives and found out, actually find out where I am from. Okay, so it's very important for us to know where. Where did we come from? And I think we have records uh, which will actually tell us which part of India we are from because we cannot deny the, the links that we have in India. And that is something we need to be proud of. We are both part of India and we are part of Fiji as well. So um, we, we always talk about, uh, there's always a lot of talk about the struggles, the toils that the Girmitis have had here in Fiji. But I think one thing that must have kept them going was the unity that they had. 
the brotherhood that they had and, and how they, they related to each other. And uh, probably that's what kept them going, the communal uh, lifestyle and the gatherings that they had. And that would have definitely enabled them to overcome the hardships that they went through, the hardships that we know that has been recorded into the books of history. And at this point, I'd like to reiterate what His Excellency, our President, uh, said this morning at the launch of the Girmit uh, Centralia celebrations at Albert Park, and I quote, he said, Girmit's story isn't a story confined to one community in Fiji. It is a story that belongs to all of us, an inspirational chapter of the story of the development of our nation as a whole. Girmit is a story to be told and retold and retold, not because it is part of our distant colonial past, but because it is relevant to our present and to our future. Not only did the Girmitis lay the foundation for much of what we know in Fiji today, they set an example of endurance, teamwork, sacrifice in the service of our beloved nation. And that is an example for every Fijian to follow and inspiration to all of us. And I unquote. I think that's one of, that's, that's a message that is summarized. Uh, that, that, is, that is basically the crux of this matter. We need to celebrate this with that message in, in, uh, in our mind. Um, uh, another thing that I think comes out very strong with uh, our links to the Girmi days is the culture and tradition uh, that has been preserved over time and that is something that we are enjoying now and it is very much evident in our lifestyles, our dressing, our food, our celebrations, Holi Diwali, which sort of encompasses all sectors of our community, all religions, all cultures come together to celebrate, uh, whether it's Diwali, whether it's Eid, whether it's Ram Nomi, we you celebrate it together. And if we look back and think, where did it come from? It came from what was left uh, for us by our, our forefathers. And uh, yeah, and I think um, the, the, the differences in the culture, uh, cultures that we have in Fiji, sort of uh, the diversity in the cultures that we have is, is something that unites us all. We, we, we live, uh, we coexist uh, with each other in peace and harmony. And we need to continue to do that. So for me, remembering and honoring and paying tribute to our Girmitia should not be confined to one day alone. We need to remember them in our homes. We need to teach uh, the stories about uh, the Girmitias um, in our homes again. And again, we, teach, we need to teach our children this, not only in the homes, in the classroom. Social studies in uh, secondary school has this chapter on indenture system. And sometimes it is just taught as a curriculum. I think uh, we need to encourage teachers, those who are doing it should be commended for that, for bringing life to the life of the indentured. We, we need to bring life to the stories that we have for people to actually feel and see uh, w what happened in those days. And uh, again, uh, for me, I think one of the words that I believe is, is compassion. We need to deal with this issue with a lot of compassion, a lot of love, respect and dignity, then only can we take this forward. Otherwise, we will continue to have celebrations and after celebrations, what's next? It, we, we, we need to live in our past as well. And again, if I may stress, it's very important for us to make sure that our children know where our past is for them to move ahead in future with those values. Um, you'd also agree with me that the stories that have been told to us about li the life of our Girmitias, those was, was very hard, okay, horrifying. Uh, His Excellency mentioned they were promised heaven, but they were given hell, okay. But out of that, the learning is the resilience of these people, okay. The resilience. Those who could not take it went back for reasons. Those who stayed back, stayed back for their reasons. I'm glad mine stayed back and gave me an opportunity to be part of this beloved nation. I would never wish to live anywhere else. And I'm so glad that my forefathers decided to stay here. And this event actually has inspired me to go back and look at the records in the archives where I, where I am from. And maybe when we have the next celebrations, I will be able to uh, really tell you where I am from, which part of India. And uh, so, um, yes, I think we, we, we need to look at Girmit days as a learning experience for us too, and especially for our younger generation, for our children, that, that the spirit of resilience is very important. And this was clearly 
I think the word resilience is, is being mentioned more and more and more after DC Winston. Eh? We, we have a very resilient community. So I think that's something that we got back from, from those days. That's one of the values that we've got. We need to fight on, we need to move on. Um, and uh, again, like I said, um, <clears throat> today, like today as we celebrate and participate, we do it as a family and we must be proud of our history. We must be proud of our culture and we must be proud that we always stand united in no matter what comes. The President also mentioned this morning that we are all Fijians and it is enshrined in our 2013 Constitution where we now have equal rights and equal opportunities and equal citizenry. And in view of the Fijian government's inclusivity, there will be, as mentioned, celebrations throughout. But I would also urge Fijians to continue celebrating in their, in their own homes, in your own hearts. We need to keep celebrating the fact that uh, we, we have proud associations with this event that has gone down in the history of our, our Fijian books. And uh, <clears throat> again, finally, I know you're looking for the evening, so I'll leave you with this word on, on our language again. Let's, uh, let's keep our language alive. Okay. Um, let's communicate. I know there are many situations where we are mandated to speak in a foreign language, English, but in our own homes, let us practice our mother tongue and uh, encourage our children to continue to do so. Encourage our children to continue reading history books. We do not want history books with accounts of uh, Girmi days gathering dust in our library shelves or in our school library shelves. It has to be a living document. Okay. Our writers put in a lot of effort, put in a lot of thought, put in a lot of uh, resources, time and compassion and we need people to appreciate that. So before I take my seat, can we give it up for all our writers who have actually been part, who, who, who have actually been part of recording these events. Without their records, we would not have any idea what has happened and we'd like to encourage people to keep writing. And I think this is where the um, uh, University of the South Pacific, through the assistance of the government of India, can encourage their students to keep, keep writing. I mean, I know students, you, you don't have to be secondary school students, they're adult students. And we, we look forward for more records of this. And uh, finally, uh, ladies and gentlemen, may God bless uh, all the Girmitis and their descendants and those that have survived. And I wish you all uh, enjoy the celebrations throughout the country and uh, please do uh, keep uh, today and tomorrow I, I'm sure you keep following the, the media news to see where celebrations are and we encourage everybody to attend this uh, very important celebration that has been planned to pay tribute to the um, uh, to our Girmitis and of course to the last ship that brought in the last load of indentured system. Let, uh, sorry, indentured laborers. This should, we should not confuse the last ship with the end of indentured system because the indentured system happened four years after that. Okay, so with these words, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy. Enjoy the celebrations and on a final note, as a minister responsible for health, uh, my message to you is please keep, keep well, keep fit, take ownership of your own health. Um, that's something that uh, I can only say eat well, sleep well, exercise, and be kind to yourself when you, when, you, when you see feasts. I'm sure we're going to have a heavy dinner after this, and I'm glad it's vegetarian, but, well, I, I'm hoping it's vegetarian. So please do it well, uh, take care of yourself, take care of your families, and uh, may God bless you all.